Uh, best ways to hold yourself accountable. I keep falling off track with macros, and I'm also in a cut. The best ways. Give us the quickest top three ways to keep yourself accountable. Public accountability is number one. Yeah. Um, it does in, involve other people, but it is keeping yourself accountable because at the end of the day, like a coach is going to be the best way to keep you accountable because it's an external person that you are paying. So you have money accountable and but you respect check you keeping you accountable. There's a form of accountability that's better than a coach. But if you can't afford a coach and you have to do it yourself, the next best to use the people around you totally so tell your friends tell your family tell your social media tell anybody that is listening or that will see you something tell them what you're doing what your goal is what you're after because once it's in the universe it becomes a real fucking thing and you're going to work way harder to get it yeah you have something to add to that i depending on the severity of how bad you want it like i i don't think that depending on how bad you want it i don't think that if you you want it the absolute most. I don't know what the definition of the absolute most is, but if you truly are like sacrificing everything, you want this. I don't think putting it on social media is the best accountability. I don't. I think like one on one or personal or verbally to someone that you know actually cares for you. I, I get so advertising it. But so in this, the, let me let me. I think where you're going is me going. Hey Travis, this is literally what I'm going to achieve. I'm saying on social media, I'm not saying, hey guys, these are my goals. It's I tell you my goal and my goal requires me to do journaling every day. So I'm going to take a picture of me journaling on my story all the fucking time because I want people to see I'm me developing these habits. That is accountability it, for doing it, yeah. the things required. You don't necessarily got to spill the beans of like what you're really trying to go achieve. And yeah. you're, you know what I mean? Like on social media, yeah. but you do got to tell somebody. Yeah. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And and sometimes it's, it can be vague, right? I share things on this podcast all the fucking time. I've said this before too. I share things all the time about, aspirations, levels, things we want to create, things we want to build. And it's pretty vague. I don't get super nitty gritty of like exactly what we're doing, but I kind of say broadly, like we're going to do this because it's accountability. If I say it on this podcast, I'm going to do it. I know it because there's thousands of people listening to this and they're expecting me to do it. And even if they forget in my mind, they're expecting me yeah, to do yeah, it. Yeah. So I better fucking hold my weight. Totally. Um, and then the other side of that too is like, you got to think about like this. If, if I truly do want something so bad, and public accountability is the best way for me to stay consistent with it. I will tell anybody, everybody, it doesn't matter. Because the judgment of others matters less to me than me accomplishing that goal. There we go. You know what I mean? Because yeah. I think if I have hesitation and I don't want to do it, then I don't really want it that bad. Because I care more about what these people think than I do about that goal. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Because sometimes we set goals for the wrong reasons, right? And I do care what you think about me. I care about what my family thinks about me. I care about what my best friends think about me. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's certain people I don't give a shit about what they think about me. But if I'm extremely hesitant to put it out there, it's either because I truly don't believe in myself mm -hmm. or I don't care that much about accomplishing it, which is also something to think about because if you don't care that much about accomplishing it, admit that, set a goal that you really give a shit about yeah. and put your effort and focus into that instead of stressing about how you can't accomplish this thing you or really don't, don't even to. care about. Yeah, don't want to. Yeah. I think also some people set, I mean, maybe they don't, but I believe this is true, that people set goals for the wrong reasons and people, I hate to say this, but achieve those goals and or, and or strive to achieve those goals for the wrong reason. Mm -hmm. Like that motivation is there because of the judgment of others and they're going to get that goal because people are judging or they think that people are judging them way, that way or they are. But they're striving for that goal and they are going to conquer that goal for the wrong reason. Yep. hundred percent. That's like a weird motivation. Some people have. Yeah. But I think that there's there. I mean, if we look out of, at, out of despite, there's, there's two types of people. There's uh, if there's, so if there's people who, if I have to accomplish this in order for this person to respect me or, or judge me positively, I don't even want that person in my life. I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, so it's a e really good point. It's either the situation where, you're worried about the judgment of others and they really will judge you. And that means they're really not a good person to be in your life. Or it's a story you're creating in your head. And that person doesn't care whether you accomplish or not. They just care that you're happy. So them judging you is irrelevant. That's a story in your head. You're assuming these people are going to judge you over these things, but they're not. Or assuming they already are. Yeah. It, it's assuming. Yeah. Agreed. They either aren't and they're good people in your life or they are and they're not good people in yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because... The good people in your life want you to succeed. They're going to push you to succeed. They're going to root you up, but they're not going to not like you or judge you differently for failing, especially if they weren't trying to do the same thing. True. Because yeah, they can't say shit. But 
this is, I said this in the same email to the same person I was just talking about earlier. And I've said this to multiple people and it's a quote I stole from somebody else. I don't remember who said it originally, but the, the quote was, uh, achieving abs, like getting lean enough to see your abs won't create happiness, but finding happiness or no, it was, uh, abs aren't the path to happiness, but happiness is a faster path to abs. And the whole point of that is, is if I'm chasing getting shredded constantly because I think that's going to make me happy, it's usually because I want people around me to perceive me a certain way. Nobody gives a shit what my abs look like. Realistically, they don't. The only people that care a little bit are people who don't realize they care, and it's because it's going to get their attention more on social media, mm-hmm. and their perception of me will be a healthier or more fit person because of my abs, that kind of thing, right? But they don't even realize that. That's just marketing. You see something like that and you're like oh they must know what they're doing because they have abs which isn't always the case but um everybody else nobody gives a shit what's under my shirt yeah realistically they don't at all it's just me so if i assume i'm going to be fulfilled and happy by getting lean enough to have abs i got to ask backwards instead accept your body be happy chase health then you'll be happy and content in the journey you'll be more consistent you won't have urges to binge any of those things and you're more likely to achieve abs doing it for the right reason you're getting healthy and lean because you want to be healthy and lean and feel good. Not because you want people to be you a certain way. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and it doesn't mean you can't strive to get abs because yeah. that's what we do for a living. Yeah. I'm striving to get abs right now. But it's has nothing to do with what people will see in me. I'll use it for marketing. Great. I've done it every time I do a photo shoot. It's like, of course. But at the same time, like, I'm doing it because I like living a little bit leaner than I am right now. Yeah. And I went through the bulk and it's just time <clears> to do that. So, um, pertaining to the question, uh, which was, um, best ways to hold yourself accountable, right? Public accountability. <clears throat> that was number one. Good God. Um, that, that was a good little side. <laughs> no, for sure. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> I just didn't realize that was only one. <laughs> <laughs> so public accountability is number one. Um, number two, um, I think having some kind of, uh, habit tracking system, some kind of dopamine system, which dopamine is uh, a neurotransmitter, kind of a chemical reaction in your mind that essentially is, it's a, re- it's a, it's part of the reward center in your yeah, brain. If you achieve something. Yep. You get a like on Instagram, you get a little dopamine kick. <laughs> feels good. And, and that's the sad part of yeah. dopamine. Yeah. Um, for smokers, smoke a cigarette, you get a dopamine kick. Anybody with any type of addiction, they're addicted to the dopamine kick and response they get. That's why nicotine gum works well because it gives you that dopamine kick without having to smoke cigarettes. It's an easy way to get out of smoking cigarettes. Um, habit trackers, where you're checking off boxes, there's a dopamine response. When you do, this is why, I mean, you see, I love checking things off my boxes mm-hmm. because if I have a to-do list and I check, mark them in red ink, that's I get a dopamine kick every time I accomplish something. It's like, it's, it's, it's so simple, mm-hmm. but it's, it's a reward. Um, the, the red X is on the calendar is the same thing with that. Like every time you, you finish your day, achieving your habit, you put red X on the calendar, right? You get a dopamine kick every time. Um, it's a reward. So doing that is going to keep you accountable. Having some kind of habit tracking system that allows you to get that dopamine response every time you do good, you accomplish the task. Um, and this even works in, in ways, uh, this is another client example for a different client that, that we're actually talking about right now, trying to figure out a dopamine response to eliminate the current dopamine response. And that sounds weird, but if somebody is struggling to adhere to their diet and they binge on the weekends or they have a cheat meal or they go over their calories or they, they eat too much sugar, they're doing those things because they get a little stressed out or they have an emotional thing, or it's a hunger response, whatever. But as soon as they get a taste of that, they get that dopamine response. It's a sedation tool. It's why people go to food when they're sad. If you're addicted to drugs or alcohol or sex or porn or whatever, that's where you go, yeah. right? Um, I got a dopamine response. I still kind of do, to be honest with you, from work. So like if I'm stressed or struggling or in a bad place or in a fight uh, with my wife or anything, I'll go up in the office and work and create infographics, just anything, dude. It's just like, because I can control that and it gives me instant feedback of like, you're doing good, buddy. Yeah. Give me a pat on the back. You yeah. know what I mean? So I want that response. Yeah. I really um, love that. That's a dopamine for you. It is. I mean, it's for a, my sake. It's, <laughs> it's a positive one. That's dope. <laughs> but I mean, like uh, people talk about runner's high. Yeah. I will never understand runner's high because yeah. I run for five minutes and I'm like, I hate this. You're also not them. I'm not them. I don't get a dopamine response from yeah. it. You know what I mean? Some people get that runner's high. And so God, I know. when they're stressed, what do they do? They, they go, go on a run. And some of them just don't stop. That's the same thing as going to the gym. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. A A lot of people have that. That's what, before I was an entrepreneur, that's what it was for me. Let's go work out. You know what I mean? Go do push-ups, go run hill sprints, anything. That's so But everybody has a different one. Yep. 
Um, and for somebody like me, like I used to party a lot and, you know, smoke weed and do stuff like that. And those were my dopamine response. So for me, it was like working out was my healthy way of doing that. And so I was able to eliminate all that stuff. And I, you know, I drink once a week or whatever, but I was able to do these healthier ways, which can also lead to a bad relationship with working out or food or, or dieting or burnout because you're training too hard. But totally. the point being is in the situation where let's say you, you turn to food and you overeat because that's your, your reward because that's your way of feeling better and your sedation tool to give you that dopamine response is like, fuck this. I'm gonna have a donut. So if it's like a fuck this, that's not a reward. It's not a reward, but it's part of the reward center of your brain. So the chemical, and this is that I'm getting there. So, um, I always call it a positive addiction. So a positive addiction would be the habit track, right? So like in a sense, like this is a very simplistic way of looking at it, but if you are in a bad place and you seek a donut to give you that dopamine kick because it essentially, it's a sedation, so it makes you feel better. It's the same feeling, chemically speaking, in your brain as a reward. What can you do to reward yourself for not taking the donut, right? So not having the donut requires more discipline, more willpower, more sacrifice, right, and grit. What can you do instead? Maybe it's chug a glass of water and go on a walk and then check off a box that you fought the urge again. But when you check off that box because you just did a 10-minute walk and chug a glass of water instead of taking the donut or the cookie or whatever, you get a dopamine response for that. Now you're creating a positive addiction loop totally. to something that allows you to stick to your goals. And eventually, you just don't do that. Instead, you just have a daily habit of chugging a glass of water and going on a walk and checking off a box. It sounds simple, but once you can do it once and you can kind of trick your brain, then all of a sudden it becomes more positive. In the past, we would do this with things like that, but we wouldn't tell them what's going on. We would just say, hey, like, hey, like, if you get that urge, all I want you to do is go on a walk, chug a glass of water. If you still feel like you need that donut, go have the donut. But if you don't, check off this red box. And we're just going to see how many times we can do that. Once they see three in a row, they don't want to fucking break that streak because yeah. they get a dopamine response yeah. from the, ki- the consistency, right? And now you're like, fuck yeah, I'm going to knock out 30 days. Set up a reward for yourself at the end of 30 days. I'm going to buy a new pair of jeans, new belt, new shirt, whole new outfit because I'm 10 pounds lighter. Yeah. You know what I mean? So now, if, at, at the end of the day, now I just tell people like, hey, this is actually what's happening yeah. hormonally and neurologically speaking. Like we're creating this positive dopamine response. But you can do this with anything. It's like, I want to make more money. Okay. What habits, actions, tasks, strategies, what do you need to do to make more money, build your business, whatever? You list out five things. Okay, cool. You're going to do those five things every fucking day and you're going to check off a box every time you do it. Now you have a positive addiction to just crushing shit, right? And they become habits. Now they're easy. Now you're making more money and it's not, it's simple. Your business is growing and you don't even have to think twice about it because they're habits. You've done them long enough. Um, so that would be number two, that, that positive I mean, fuck, dude, this, this question could be a whole podcast. Yeah. This is a really good one. <laughs> um, so public accountability and then the positive addiction loop, so the, the dopamine kick. You want to um, give one more? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to try to think of one because, and this is where, like, I think, like, we, we've, just, just, we've talked about this a lot, but this is what separates good coaches from great coaches. Great coaches, coaches, <laughs> <laughs> uh, good coaches, no macros, mm. right? Great coaches, no macros, and how the fuck this person thinks yeah. and acts and, and what their brain is to do, whether they like it or not. How do we change these, these cues and these signals that are already programmed in their brain? How do we rewire them to Quote do unquote, these things? Doing more. Doing more. Yeah. They go above and beyond. Yeah. You know, like this podcast is the podcast that goes beyond training and nutrition. Yeah. It's the whole point. It's a yeah. coaching company that goes beyond coaching and, or training and nutrition that becomes great coaches. Yeah. Um, Love it. It's hard to say another one, man. If you do those two things, I mean, you're just crushing let's, it. Let's keep it at two. Yeah, I think two is fine. We, got, we had a lot of questions. Yeah, I don't think I can even add anything. You prepared to for a podcast on uh, being accountable yeah. in the near future. Yeah, <laughs> no shit.